So if we come to the last section regarding the tumors of the stomach, we'll be studying about the prevention of gastric cancer. How can we prevent the gastric cancer from developing and what are the different types of modalities. So we'll be studying about the pre-malignant conditions that predisposes to gastric cancer and then how can we screen a population uh, with uh, gastric cancer and what are the preventions. So if we talk about the pre-malignant conditions, pre-malignant conditions means that the conditions that can predispose to a malignancy or in such case conditions that can predispose to gastric cancer. First being the chronic atrophic gastritis, which can occur as a result of Helicobacter pylori infection, chronic uh, infection, and then causing chronic atrophic gastritis. Second being the intestinal metaplasia and dysplasia that, that can be uh, the um, changes within the epithelium of the stomach and slightly predisposing to a cancerous type. Second, third being the gastric polyps. As gastric polyps, uh, prevalence is around 0.8 to 2.4 percentage and the predominant being the fundic uh, type of gastric polyp which is around 50 percent and then the second type of gastric polyp being the hyperplastic gastric polyp which is around 40 percent and then the adenomatous polyps which is around 10 percent. So these polyps can also predispose to a gastric cancer. And then Meniteus disease, around 50% of patients with Meniteus disease are associated with gastric cancer. And then uh, lastly being the peptic ulcer disease as uh, this is caused by Helicobacter pylori infection and then this can slowly predispose to gastric cancer. So if we talk about chronic atrophic gastritis. The annual incidence of uh, the progression of chronic atrophic gastritis is around 0.5 to 1 percent. So almost 0.5 to 1 percent of the population can have a risk and predispose to gastric cancer. And as chronic atrophic gastritis is divided into two, one being the environmental atrophic gastritis and the autoimmune atrophic gastritis. So the environmental type of atrophic gastritis is more likely to be associated with metaplasia. And um, this chronic atrophic gastritis has a tenfold increased risk of um, developing a gastric cancer. And if we talk about the metaplasia and dysplasia, so there are three types of metaplasia and dysplasia, one being the type one, which is a complete uh, uh, metaplasia and dysplasia, which contains cells which are goblet cells. And then second being the incomplete type of metaplasia, which is which contains a few uh, absorptive cells and columnar um, intermediate cells and also combined with uh, goblet cells. And third type is the incomplete type which has the intermediate cells and the goblet cells. So these types of metaplasia that occurs within the epithelium of the stomach uh, can predispose to a gastric cancer. And if we talk about peptic ulcer disease like we've seen that it is a pre-malignant condition. If we talk more specifically about the gastric ulcers, they have a more, um, they can be more prone to develop a gastric cancer and the increased uh, risk of gastric cancer is predisposed to gastric cancers. If we talk about duodenal ulcers, duodenal ulcers um, has a more opposite type of effect. It causes a decrease in the gastric cancer. So these are two types of uh, diagrams, one being the uh, chronic atrophic gastritis, which uh, in this diagram, we can see that uh, there are some injurious type of effects on the uh, mucosal surface of the epithelium, as you can see in this picture. And the second picture is the picture of a metaplasia, histological picture of metaplasia and dysplasia as there is a complete change that has been occurring as these are the folds within the stomach and uh, uh, gastric folds and they're completely flattening out and predisposes to a more um, metaplastic sort of character. So if we talk about screening as uh, the uh, gastric cancer is uh, one of the leading cause of cancer mortality. So it's very necessary to screen a population um, to rule out if they, there is a presence of gastric cancer or not.
So usually we screen our population with the help of an upper endoscopy, uh, which is a screening test for gastric cancer. And around 25 to 35% of um, individuals have a reduced risk of gastric cancer in patients who have participated in an uh, uh, in a screening test routine and other than that uh, serum pep uh, pepsinogen is also increased increasingly used to screen the patients as pepsinogen uh, low serum levels of pepsinogens uh, is also used as serum marker low pepsinogen uh, levels around less than 70 and if we talk about the ratio between the pepsinogen 1 and 2 so if there is less than 3 um, level of uh, the ratio it can also predispose to um, uh, the risk of gastric cancer and also the um, increased use of uh, increased gastrin within the stomach hypergastrinemia can also predispose to gastric cancer so as gastric cancer is uh, very lethal has a very lethal nature it is very necessary to see the preventive measures that can uh, that an individual can adapt. If we talk about um, prevention, the eradication of Helicobacter pylori infection is very necessary as um, these days there is a decline in the Helicobacter pylori infection which has noticed a decline in the gastric cancer. And then the use of aspirin and NSAIDs has a protective role uh, against the prevention of uh, the gastric cancer and then the use of statins and antioxidants. And lastly, green tea has also uh, showed a few uh, beneficial effects on the prevention of gastric cancer. So if we talk specifically about the eradication of Helicobacter pylori infection, the effect of Helicobacter pylori infection uh, um, has a very drastic effect on the, on the pathological events of predisposing to a gastric cancer. So eradication uh, of Helicobacter pylori infection is not very significant, but it has shown some reduction in the cancer risk. As in that, it can also lead to decreased oxidative stress and decreased cell proliferation, which is one of the um, characteristic feature of a malignancy. And lastly, it is also uh, beneficial if there's an HP eradication uh, occurring after the treatment of a gastric cancer, so, such as the um, after the treatment, uh, surgical treatment such as gastrectomy or after EMR or ESD. If the patients uh, um, take the treatment of Helicobacter pylori infection, it can have a very beneficial effect. So as I've told you before that aspirin and NSAIDs also has a very protective role against the uh, development of a cancer. It usually inhibits cyclooxygenases and uh, COX-2 e expression occurs as associated with aggressive cell growth. And then it could also promote growth of tumors and inhibit uh, apoptosis and increase angiogenesis. So these factors are all inhibited as these are the expressions of COX-2. And as aspirin and NSAIDs are the inhibitors of COX-2, so these uh, expressions such as the angiogenesis and the uh, inhibition of apoptosis, these all factors can be uh, reduced with the help of aspirin and NSAIDs intake. Also, other than that, there are statins that are also useful in the prevention of uh, the gastric cancer. Statins such as the HMG-CoA um, inhibitors, which are cholesterol-lowering agents, they can help in preventing the gastric cancer. They have a more anti-proliferative and pro-apoptotic effects, such as it inhibits the proliferation of cells and it um, induces apoptosis. Other than that, this drug also has a chemo preventive uh, sort of an effect and agents that can cause the prevention of a cancer. Other than that, antioxidants as the uh, formation and the production of free radicals uh, is a very, has a very carcinogenic effect on the um, on the epithelium and on the 
pathogenesis of gastric cancer so antioxidants uh, uh, such as the carotenoids and vi vitamin C and E which are present in different types of fruits and vegetables are very important in uh, preventing cancer and lastly green tea which is usually used in um, Japan and North Korea so these populations they the, they have an increased intake of uh, green tea which uh, induces uh, apoptosis and inhibits the tumor cell growth proliferation and it has a reduction in the cox expression which i've mentioned before as cox uh, expressions uh, involves the um, increased uh, angiogenesis and the inhibition of apoptosis and increased cell proliferation so green tea has a very uh, positive effect uh, regarding the uh, suppression of these cox2 expressions So if we uh, make the summary of this lecture, we've seen that we've studied about the gastric cancer, which is adenocarcinoma, which is the uh, which takes up the majority of the malignancies of uh, the stomach. And we've studied about the different epidemiological factors and the different causating factors of gastric carcinoma. And then how can we manage a gastric carcinoma? How can a patient present uh, with uh, this cancer and then what are the different investigations and what are the tre different treatment modalities that we can offer to these patients and then what are the preventive measures how can we prevent a gastric cancer to develop and how can we screen a patient with uh, gastric cancer how can we screen a population with this cancer so that's all we've uh, studied in this lecture i hope you've enjoyed this lecture thank you for watching scardia.com